Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up everyone? This is OJ. The Barbarian Barrel has pretty close stats to the log, deals 239 damage, both have a 3.9 tile width, but the Barbarian Barrel stops short at 6.5 tiles. This means it will not connect to the Princess Tower. Left alone, the single Barbarian will hit the tower three times, dealing 500 damage. Even if a Princess Tower is down, it will not connect to the King Tower despite the blinking. This is a graphical error that might be fixed in the next update, but the Barbarian does land directly on top of the tower, so he's ready to pounce the King for some easy chip damage. If you compare it side by side with the log, the barrel actually rolls a bit slower than the log. Maybe the Barbarian's beefiness slows it down or something. The Barbarian Barrel has similarities to the log though. It can one-shot Stabby Goblins, Spear Goblins, Princess, Dark Goblin, Ice Spirit, and Fire Spirits. It only rolls 6.5 tiles. The bridge and river are 2 tiles long. This means any Princess planted 5 tiles from the river will not be hit by the barrel. You'll know she's within range if she starts blinking. Yay. Just like the log, it doesn't quite kill archers, but it brings them down low enough for your tower to polish them off. And now if they don't have the skeletons or ice spirit, they'll have to commit a lot more elixir to prevent 500 damage from being dealt to your tower. Since it's not a legendary card, it does not knock back the big baddies. Just like Fireball, these big guys aren't affected by the knockback. So it's going to be Bowler, Battle Ram, Roll Giant, Giant Prince, Dark Prince, Giant, Golem Giant, Skeleton, Pekka, Mega Knight, and Sparky. It is not a replacement to the log, so it will not knock back the thick boys. This is especially scary in a Prince heavy meta where the Prince retains its charge and evaporates that Barbarian. Another reason why it is not a direct replacement for the log is because it does not offer that guaranteed chip damage. In a really close match, the log's chip damage can determine the outcome of the game. It does offer more defensive capabilities against a giant witch combo than the log can. It can take out her baby skellies, knock back the witch, then the barbarian takes her out. Pretty much the barbarian barrel is very capable of paralyzing a giant with any fireball he supported behind him especially since it bypasses the giant and separates the troop away from the giant, buying your Tesla more time to gently caress the giant. One on one, it can counter a knight for a neutral elixir trade. If you place it in front of your princess tower, or even one tile in front of the princess tower, it is just enough distance that that barbarian will not spawn within range of the enemy's tower. But if you place it two tiles away from your princess tower, it will spawn within range of the princess tower. This is important to know that this tile and any tile forward is necessary for the barbarian to cross the river. It's something that you want to avoid. This is the bad tile when trying to counter a musketeer. The barbarian has to walk in circles around the bridge from the other side to reach the musketeer. If that musketeer were supported with a giant, the barbarian would not have taken her out. It's decent at stopping a single knight, but it's even better against the knight goblin barrel combo. It denies the barrel and stops the knight for a positive elixir trade. It can completely crush medium-sized ground troops, even mini P.E.K.K.A. Use the knockback to knock it to the right and spawn the barbarian on the left for maximum kiting. You can get creative, counter the mini P.E.K.K.A. with bats and knock it back with a barrel, then the barbarian spawns and those bats are ready to pounce. Countering a 4 elixir mini P.E.K.K.A. translates into a 5 elixir push. These macro plays are extremely dependent on your matchup, such as knowing that they don't have zap to counter your bats. The Barbarian tanking makes the bats infinitely more threatening. Maybe their cheapest counter is a fireball. Now you've spent 5 elixir on the bats and barrel, and they've spent 8 elixir on the mini P.E.K.K.A. and fireball. Another example is if you take out the goblin gang. It's 3 for 3, but you have a Barbarian barrel that's headed towards a tower, and he will deal 500 damage if it's left ignored. If there's a princess right at the bridge, this is basically trading for a free barbarian. You can let the barbarian be slightly annoying, or you can throw a goblin barrel into the combo and make it threatening. Though it should be noted that it doesn't travel far enough to eliminate a goblin barrel and a bridge princess. It's one or the other. But at least the barbarian can finish off the princess? 
Sending a Barbarian Barrel to the tower is risky if they can counter it with an Ice Golem, Ice Spirit, or even Skeletons. But if their lowest cost troop is 3 Elixir, they're never going to counter this for a positive trade. A Barbarian really only has 636 health, so it's not really worth using this like a Miner. Pairing the Barrel with Graveyard is 8 Elixir. You can get punished real hard for executing this combo. An Ice Golem is a better tank with more hit points and a lower elixir cost. Against the Hog, if you don't have any proper counters, playing the Barbarian Barrel slightly in the back so the Barbarian spawns in front of the tower prevents the Baconator from getting more than two hits on your tower. This is kind of nifty if you ever see Goblins and a Hog since the Barrel itself can demolish those Stab Gobbies. Against the 3M push, the Barbarian Barrel can actually take care of two unprotected Musketeers. It's important to note that Knockback is the only true stun in the game that resets your attack frame back to zero. If you plant it slightly higher than this tile and you miss the Knockback attack cancel, the first Musketeer will land the hit on the tower and the second Musketeer will actually be pushed to safety out of range of your tower. The outcome? 700 extra damage on your tower. Timing and placement is key. A single Barbarian deployed into the middle of the map is going to get annihilated. Both Prince's Towers targeting one Barbarian melts it. The only building that is worth getting barreled is a Tombstone since it takes out the Skeletons as well. This clears the path supporting your Prince, Giant, or whatever push you have going on. If you haven't seen my log video yet, Here's the 4 minute video. If you've already seen it, it's a nice refresher. Mmm, it's an orange juice. The Log is a legendary spell that can only be cast on your side of the map. It has a 360 degree area of knockback. It can knock units forward, left, right, and backwards. Since it can knock back units in all directions, a great example of this would be to knock back the first set of guards forward while pushing the other guards sideways. This allows the tower to take them out faster, and gives your opponent less time to support the guards. Since this spell isn't instantaneous, the duration that it remains rolling on the map is the area you're denying your opponent from planting counter units in this space. The log's unique pushback mechanic allows you to use it in a variety of ways. To extend the duration of poison, it can push units back into poison. Using the same concept, it can push units into the giant skeleton's bomb. This applies with all the other spells. You can clump up barbarians to pull them closer to the back end units for a fireball. If you're not sitting at full elixir, always wait until the princess is approaching the bridge. Once the princess is close, deploy the log. There are countless times where I've taken out fire spirits that were meant to protect the princess. A front of bridge princess is usually countered with goblins, spear goblins, or fire spirits. If you know they countered your princess the first time, the second time you get the princess to the front, you can use a prediction log. It does a better job of taking care of the skeleton army and goblin barrel than a zap does. If they plant the miner in the gamble position, you can use the log to force a king's activation. If your pump is planted in the center and they send in a miner from the side, you can redirect the miner onto your arena tower to save your pump. If your opponent places a miner in this exact corner, it can force the miner to activate the king's tower. Fire spirits and the log can take out three musketeers. You have to use the tip of the log to make sure musketeers are all knocked in the same area. Then place fire spirits while they're stunned from the log's knockback. If you use the front of the log, it'll just split the musketeers forward, left and right. Then the fire spirits won't splash all of them. This technique requires a bit of practice to pull off consistently. Friendly matches with the climate would be a good idea. If it's too hard to pull off, Ice Golem and Fire Spirits will be more reliable. We hope you can learn from this video and apply it in very creative ways. Big shout out to Apprentice from OJ for helping me with the log tech. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more quality OJ.